This is the medial meniscotibial ligament repair kit. It comes with everything you need to perform the meniscotibial ligament repair. First are the guide pins. It comes with three guide pins, as you can see here. The second important piece of equipment is the guided arthroscopic placement guide, or the gap guide. You can see here that this guide has a narrow channel, which goes over the guide pin. The guide pin will be parallel to the surface of the joint. And this places us at the appropriate angle and three millimeters below the articular surface of the articular cartilage of the tibia, ensuring safe and reproducible drilling. It also comes with the necessary drill for the 3.0 knotless suture tack. This drill fits through the guide and has a positive stop so that you are drilling to the appropriate depth every time. The kit comes with two of the 3.0 knotless suture tacks. Once your hole is drilled, the guide is not moved. The guide is kept stationary. The tack fits through the guide, is impacted so that the handle of the knotless suture tack abuts the handle of the drill guide that gets you at the appropriate depth. You then remove the rubber O-ring, which frees the sutures up and allows you to remove the inserter. You then remove the guide and you have your repair suture along with your passing sutures. The procedure starts with an initial diagnostic ultrasound of the knee confirming extrusion and instability of the meniscus, both the degree of extrusion and the reducibility of the meniscus, followed by a diagnostic arthroscopy in which intraarticular pathology of the knee is addressed. Once that's been adequately addressed, we then take the steps necessary to stabilize the meniscus and repair the medial meniscotibial ligaments. You can see here on this specimen, we've marked the joint line and we've marked the anterior and posterior extents of the medial meniscotibial ligament insufficiency. That is done preoperatively in the operating room via the ultrasound. And those will serve as important landmarks uh, for the steps of this procedure. Once we've addressed the intraarticular pathology, we're then going to prepare the tissues for meniscotibial ligament repair. The first step is preparation of the medial meniscotibial ligaments. An arthroscopic rasp such as this is placed deep to the meniscus in the gutter to roughen both the medial tibial metaphyseal surface below the articular uh, cartilage and also to roughen the meniscotibial ligaments. Once we've completed that, we are then going to place our guide pins relevant to the anterior and posterior extents of our meniscotibial ligament insufficiency. These guide pins come in the kit. I typically will start at the anterior aspect, and these are gonna come in just below the inferior surface of the medial meniscus and parallel to the tibial plateau articular surface. When we get to drilling, we want the guide pin to point right at the base of the ACL or the tibial spine, as you see here. So we've marked the anterior extent. Now we're going to take our second guide pin and mark the posterior extent of the lesion. And there again, you can see, I'm coming in just at the inferior aspect of the meniscus through the meniscocapsular tissue, parallel to the articular surface of the tibial plateau. And again, when we drill, we're going to be pointing the tip of the guide pin at the tibial spine. So typically, we like the anchors placed or spaced at a distance of about 1 to 1.5 centimeters. So a medial meniscotibial ligament lesion of this extent will require a third anchor, and we bifurcate the distance between the anterior and posterior most extents of the lesion. You can see I'm coming in inferior to the medial meniscus, parallel to the articular surface, and again, when we drill, we'll be pointing at the medial aspect of the tibial spine. So there you can see the three 
guide pins placed, and how it views intraarticularly. At this point, we now go to a percutaneous uh, portion of the procedure. So I'm going to remove the scope. And what we do is we make an arthroscopy size incision or portal at the level or location of each of these guide pins. We will now take a hemostat and we will bluntly dissect through these little portal size incisions through the crural fascia or layer one of the medial sided soft tissue structures down to layer two, which are the superficial fibers of the medial collateral ligament. And then we will join these with a subcutaneous tunnel, again, deep to the crural fascia, superficial to layer two. The key here is for the guide pin to be parallel to the tibial articular surface and to point at the base of the ACL at the tibial spine. That ensures that we are drilling our holes perpendicular to the medial tibial metaphysis. The guide is placed over the guide pin. And this guide sets us at an appropriate angle to allow us to be three millimeters below the articular surface of the tibial articular cartilage. Again, we want to make sure that our guide wire is pointing at the tibial spine and that we're parallel to the articular surface. I advance the guide down to the tibial metaphysis and then my assistant will drill. The guide remains in place and the knotless suture tack is then placed and impacted into position. It's most helpful to remove the guide pin before taking the guide out just because of the divergent angle of the two. And there we have our first anchor in position. We will now repeat those same steps again for the middle and the posterior. So at this point, the arthroscopic portion of the procedure is essentially complete. You can see we've not violated the articular surface of the tibial plateau, and we can remove the arthroscope for the time being. Now we're going to link these knotless suture tacks in a very specific manner. We're going to take the suture from the anterior anchor and link it to the middle. We're going to take the suture from the middle anchor and link it to the posterior anchor and then the suture from the posterior anchor all the way across to the anterior anchor. So the knotless suture tack comes loaded with three sutures you can see here. One is a tiger tail that's a little bit larger in diameter than the others. This is your repair suture. These two slide, and you can see that one of these ends has a loop, as you see here, and this is what we use as our passing sutures. So to accommodate the sequence that we discussed, we're going to take the anterior suture and link it to the middle anchor. So I'll let my assistant hold the loop. We will now take our repair suture from the anterior anchor, anchor, pass it through our subcutaneous tunnel and bring it out the middle incision. We will now pass this suture through the loop and that will then allow us to link this to the middle anchor. So I use my passing suture, some simple gentle pulls, little tugs, and it pops through. And what I strongly suggest is that you put a hemostat on this so that you can differentiate it from the repair suture from the middle anchor. You don't want to get these confused. So it's just a marking hemostat, perfect. Now we're going to do the exact same step and link the middle repair suture to the posterior anchor. Now, we're gonna take the posterior repair suture and we're gonna bring it all the way across from the posterior incision to the anterior incision under the subcutaneous bridge. And we're going to link this one 
to the anterior anchor in the same manner that we link the anterior to the middle and the middle to the posterior. So now we have our three sutures linked. Now we'll put the knee under a little bit of valgus because dynamically that will reduce the meniscus and then we can adequately sequentially tension these so that we get equal tension throughout and reapproximate the meniscotibial ligament tissue to the medial tibial metaphysis. We'll then take the suture cutter and cut each of these right on down to the anchor. For the purposes of demonstration, you can see we've not violated the articular surface. I now have a hard time lifting off the meniscus because we've reapproximated that inferior tissue quite nicely. Can't really see the suture and that constitutes the repair. At this point, we would then perform another diagnostic ultrasound to look at the stability of the repair to make sure we're happy with the reduction of the extrusion of the meniscus and the overall stability. Close the portals, place the patient in the brace, and start the rehab process.